I think the problem with the world today is people are fed up, they're tired of the system. But the thing is, they don't have any ideas how it could be. It's nice that you're talking to people and yeah, it's nice to have to hear this thing. Yeah. It's like the thing that is missing today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, the that dialogue. Yeah. But it's nice, clothes. Yeah, yeah, but it's you can... cheap and uh, that's... That's the that's problem. The uh... to, to experience winning, you first gotta lose. So. Shit. Yeah, I say you play, you lose. This is my statement. Hello. My name is Pablo Calderon and I would like to talk to you about my project. It is what it is. After two years studying in this master program, I have come to build up an idea of what does social design mean, at least from my own perspective. For me, social design goes beyond the assistentialist perspective of humanitarian design, as well as from the statement-oriented perspective of critical design. Social design is about people. Moreover, Social design is about working hand in hand with different constituents, striving to empower them in their own autonomy. A social designer should have a constant dialogue with specific groups of ordinary people, always connected to the everyday. Understanding this personal approach to social design, I would like to speak about how I frame my practice within this context. For this, I have had a great influence from the artist Jeremy Deller, who creates what he calls conversation pieces, which are objects that are not so important by themselves, but by the conversations that they trigger. An example of this is the project It Is What It Is, for which he took a bombed car from Iraq around the US with a trailer, speaking with people about the war. I realized the importance of this approach in my work when I was doing an intervention in the center of Eindhoven, in which I disassembled my bike and asked people's help to assemble it back. I did not foresee that the most interesting part of it all would be the conversations triggered by the situation. I call this dialogical design, and it leads me to follow Deller's steps by stopping to attempt making things and starting to make things happen. The sociologist Manuel Castells, in the documentary from BPRO Time for Change, states how people accept capitalism, not because they agree with it, but because it is the only system that they know. This made me think of the importance of hinting people with alternatives, and I found the marketplace the best context for doing so. A market is the most representative public space, for it fosters the confrontation of people, culture and ideas. Fernand Brodel argues that markets are institutions of material exchange, over which capitalism has no special purchase. This reinforces the relevance of the context for doing such a project. Bringing together my practice and the context I have given, I decided to start The Other Market. The Other Market is a platform materialized in a meshwork of pushcarts for trading products and services without money, using dialogue as a currency. The cards were made embracing the aesthetics of informality, aiming to create a contrast with an over-planned and over-designed society. This was also the initial trigger for dialogue on the streets. No blueprints, drawings, nor measurements were made. There was little intention, if any, of achieving a look to it, but just an honest manifestation of the materials scavenged and the tools and processes available. Thus the name, it is what it is. I decided to go to the streets to make the first trade, the 5th of April, in front of McDonald's, giving homemade hamburgers in exchange of dialogue about money. Since then, I have made five more exchanges in Eindhoven and one in Utrecht. Honestly, at first I did not have great expectations on the participation of people, but after the first intervention, my vision changed completely. I realized how everybody has something important to say, and they are eager on sharing their opinion. They just need a medium to do so, and someone else to listen. I was that someone, and the market became that medium. But people are also eager on participating in an active way, as did Annie, a professional hairdresser, who joined us by cutting hair on the street herself. In front of the evidence of such engagement, I was fully convinced of the value of the other market. From that moment on, the project truly became a matter of conviction. I then wanted to share and spread the enthusiasm that had taken over me when getting such a positive response. By collaborating with different people, I managed to build and strengthen the network of the other market. This is how I have influenced, in different levels, but through direct interaction, more than 80 people. People have participating from building a new market, 
to transforming information into media, and from documenting the interventions to making them themselves. Unknowingly, I was building a meshwork of small, local markets, which is what Manuel de Landa considers necessary to counteract the growth of capitalism. By doing these different actions, I have learned plenty from listening to ordinary people on the street, some of whom you have heard at the beginning of this presentation. But I also understood the potential of the other market as a tool or medium, rather than as an end in itself. It is a medium for making things public and having direct input from people on the streets, as well as amplifying their voices. But it is also a tool for crossing the borders of design into the territory of the everyday, which was very evident the day that the other market hosted the screening of a classmate's movie on the streets. This tool helped me gather considerable amounts of content, which I translated in the other media. It is not random the choice of audio, print and video as the formats for representing dialogues, for it is an example of taking the media on our own hands with tools that help us in doing so. My role as a designer is then redefined as that of a provocateur by presenting elements that trigger discussion, but also that of a link by allowing the access to emancipatory tools to ordinary people. Now, with this project, I do not pretend to carry the responsibility of building a whole new operating system. Instead, using the words of Tony Fry, I envision the formation of a critical mass of sufficient agency to make a major difference. When the other media started to be produced, I still had difficulties on seeing it as an end or even as a finished product. This led me to get the reactions of the people, dialoguing about past dialogues, which took the conversation to a meta level. This is why the presentation of this project is focused on the reactions of different people on the things produced, rather than on the things themselves. This connects to my vision on social design and my practice in dialogical design. I would like to end this presentation with footage from the other graduation, which took place the 7th of June in the streets of Eindhoven. It's not about the money, but it's all about uh, sharing and telling each other uh, uh, how, you, uh, how you must live. You know, making people uh, interested for uh, other kind of thinking. And this gives me another opinion, another idea. And since I have this little one, I have more other ideas than I thought I had. I'm glad that there are more and more people nowadays to think about their life and a way of living and to want to do something about it and to change. I see that this is a nice trade as long as everyone wins.